Before hurricanes move in, officials urge people to move out of the storm's path. But for the brave men and women of the 53rd Weather Recognizance Squadron, evacuation isn't on their radar. This is Keesler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi, the home of the hurricane hunters. And this is the WC-130J. Beaming under a fresh coat of new paint and the word that defines its purpose, this aircraft's sunny days will soon be few and far in between. But before these hunters fly into a busy season, we were given rare access inside. Uh, we are uh, the only squad that has airborne reconnaissance weather officers. Our guide, Air Force Reservist Lieutenant Colonel Mark Withy. For the past seven years, this 42-year-old father of two has been one of the squadron's navigators. There's a lot that we can see with satellites, but ultimately the information we gather by flying through the storm and stamping it in person is really critical for them to make the most accurate forecasts and get those watches and warnings out to the public. From the Atlantic to the Pacific, they are the eyes and ears of the National Hurricane Center, flying straight into some of Earth's fiercest storms for up to 12 hours at a time. How an average person would gauge it, it would be some, some very extreme turbulence. Uh, we're going through the eye wall, and obviously uh, there's a significant amount of bouncing up and down, sometimes hundreds or thousands of feet. Do you get scared? D just. Man. I'm a bad person to ask. Is uh, no, be <laughs> honest, just be blunt. Do you get scared? I, no, not really. After all, he's flown into some of the strongest and most destructive storms in modern history. Every year is different. But no matter the storm or the season, each flight crew is made up of two pilots, a load master, a weather officer, and a navigator. So Mark, this is your office. This is my office, the navigator station on the WC-130. It's uh, a, one of the, the changes from the regular C-130J models is we have a navigator station back here, and that's where I'm going to be uh, primarily using radar to pick our way safely through the storm. He's on the lookout for radar signatures like this. They often indicate the presence of mesocyclones or vertical rotation within a storm. A close pass near these violent winds could put the crew and the aircraft in serious danger. Uh, we're flying through a very... Um, extreme environment, so uh, we have to balance accomplishing the mission with safety. Part of that mission involves flying in what's called an alpha pattern. On this flight path, data is gathered from each quadrant surrounding the center of the storm circulation. So the drop zones, they are uh, shot out of a tube here in the bottom of the aircraft. It lifts up and you uh, place the drop sonde in the tube. As it falls to the water surface, the drop sound captures temperatures, dew points, pressure levels, and wind speeds. Those numbers are then relayed back to the loadmaster on board by radio. The plane's exterior instruments are just as important, but not as obvious. Radar's right here behind this dome, and that's really our picture to the world when we're flying through those intense parts of the storm and can't see anything outside. And underneath the wing, there's this guy, nicknamed the Smurf. SFMR, the Step Frequency Microwave Radiometer, it's a, a passive sensor that's looking at the sea surface, and from that it can determine the rain rate and uh, the wind speed on the surface. And more, or should I say, faster technology is on the way. One of the, the things that we have been working on in the past few years is uh, getting a, a broadband internet connection. While the technology in the air and on the seas improves with each passing season, robots and machines will never replace the valor and the bravery of these weather warriors. We're out there responding to, to something that is uh, ultimately has the potential to, to cause a lot of impact to people's lives, usually in a negative manner. So there is an element of e e excitement in what we do, but it, at the same time, uh, we know that we're, what we're doing is to, to help folks out, and that's, that's really important to, uh, to us. Depending on the proximity of a storm to land, the hurricane hunters can travel through a storm up to eight times in one day. But this isn't just a seasonal job. They're also busy flying into nor'easters in the winter and into Pacific Ocean storms in the spring. David.